it's been kind of interesting. You know, all morning, everybody's been asking, when's the memo coming? When are they going to release the memo? And I told everybody who was asking, right around 12 noon, why then? Why not first thing? What happens at 12 noon? I asked them. And they went, oh, I get it. Live from the Southern Command in sunny South Florida, it's Open Line Friday. Right on, my friends. The memo has been released. The four pages have been declassified by President Trump. Just about five minutes ago, plenty of time for your host to get it and digest it and get started. You don't think this was coincidental, do you? They weren't going to release it at 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock. That's too close to document dump time. They wanted a full morning of pre-pub and highlight, if you will. And so here we are. It is pretty much what we have all suspected and known. It has names attached. And we'll get to it here straight away. Just want to remind you, 800-282-2882. If you want to be on the program, it's open line Friday, which means that you can pretty much talk about anything that you wish to talk about, as suspected. And these, these are just, just some bullet point highlights to start with. The Steele dossier, the Golden Showers dossier. The dossier that has yet to be confirmed, the dossier that has yet to be corroborated, which has even been admitted to by the former FBI director, James Comey. In other words, nothing in the Steele dossier which has also been known as the Trump dossier, has been verified, corroborated, or confirmed. In addition, the Steele dossier was contracted by Hillary Clinton. Her campaign ordered it. It did not exist. It was not intelligence. It was not produced by the American or international intelligence communities. It was the idea of the Clinton campaign, based on some early efforts by Fusion GPS during the Republican primaries, to hire Christopher Steele, a former British intelligence agent, to put together an opposition research document and make it look like it was intelligence product. Make it look like it was the result of intelligence agents, spies, doing deep investigations of Donald Trump and his family and associates. It was made to look like a standard intelligence document that was produced by counterintelligence American patriots when, in fact, it was nothing more than a painting commissioned by a rich guy. This was a commissioned piece of work that served as opposition research. Everything we've known about it remains true to this day. We now know that the memo asserts that this dossier formed an essential part of the first and subsequently all three renewal FISA applications against Carter Page. Now, this we've known and talked about. Carter Page was a temporary Trump campaign official who had made some trips to Russia. And it was those trips in Russia that formed the basis of manufacturing out a whole cloth, creating a series of lies that the guy was being used as an agent by the Trump administration, administration, Trump campaign, to seek relationships with the Russians. The Steele dossier, which has not been corroborated, which has not been verified, which has no facts in it, 
formed the essential basis for the initial FISA warrant. Now, this is important. Uh, before the memo was released, and I had not seen it, and I had, I had purposely I had not talked to anybody who had. So I was speculating yesterday, there has to be more in this FISA application than just this dossier. Common sense would tell me that. And remember yesterday I was asking, why wouldn't Trump declassify that? He can de- declassify anything he wants. And if the Steele dossier was used to secure a FISA warrant to spy on Donald Trump or Carter Page or Michael Flynn, whoever, if it was secured, Trump can declassify it and declassify it two years ago, two months ago, two weeks ago. And I theorized that maybe he didn't because there's more in the FISA application than just the dossier. I was speculating if, if I'm the politicized FBI and I'm a member of the establishment and I got to take this guy out, I got to destroy this guy, I'm going to load this application up with everything I've got. I'm going to find every immoral act I think Donald Trump has committed. I'm going to put it in the application. I'm going to load this thing up. It's not going to just be the dossier. And I speculated maybe Trump doesn't want any of that seen, which is why he hasn't declassified it. Well, it turns out that the dossier was the essential part of the original application. This is outrageous. They all knew it was bogus. Folks, they all knew this was bogus. They knew where it originated. They knew it originated in the campaign of the Democrat candidate for president. They knew that it was not intelligence. They knew that it was not sourced intel, unearthed by patriotic, hardworking American spies or intelligence agents. They knew where this came from. So they present the dossier as the essential element in the application for a FISA warrant to surveil Trump, to surveil Carter Page to surveil Trump Tower. And they renewed this FISA warrant three times using the dossier all three times. Another bullet point, Andrew McCabe, who has since retired from the FBI, he was a deputy FBI director, confirmed that no FISA warrant would have been sought from the court without the Steele dossier, meaning they didn't have enough of anything else. They didn't have enough of anything to get a FISA warrant to surveil and spy on the Trump campaign, the Trump transition, Carter Page, Trump Tower, you name it, without the Steele dossier which has never been corroborated, none of it has been confirmed, none of it is true, all of it written and created by the Hillary Clinton campaign using Fusion GPS. McCabe confirms that no FISA warrant would have been sought without the information in the Steele dossier. This is mind-boggling. Even though I have known this, and reported it to you, and therefore you've known it, even though we've known for I don't know how many months now that the Steele dossier made up out of whole cloth, manufactured on orders of Hillary Clinton, and she paid for it. To now actually see it confirmed by the deputy director of the FBI that no FISA warrant would have been sought because they wouldn't have been granted without the Steele dossier. Are you ready for this next one? The political origins of the Steele dossier, which I just described to you, the fact that Hillary Clinton commissioned it, The fact that a law firm acted as the cutout go-between to funnel the money to be paid for the dossier. That Fusion GPS was involved in the creation of the dossier. The political origins of the Steele dossier were known to senior Department of Justice and FBI officials, meaning they knew everything I have just told you. 
They knew everything, but excluded that when they sought the FISA warrant. They did not include in their application that it was a political document. They withheld the political news related to the very creation of this document in their FISA application. In the real world, admit it, 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 it verifies the judge was not told that the Trump dossier, the Steele dossier, was a political document. It means that it was presented as counterintelligence. It was presented as an intelligence product created by patriotic American spies and intelligence agents trying to save America from the influence of the Russians in our precious bodily fluids election in 2016. The political origins of the Steele dossier were known to senior Department of Justice and FBI officials. That means Comey, that means McCabe. And at the Department of Justice, well, Rosenstein handled the three, well, two of the applications for renewal. The hits just keep on coming. The next bullet point, Department of Justice official Bruce Orr met with Steele, who was hired to write the Trump dossier beginning in the summer of 2016. And he relayed back to the DOJ that this guy Steele is politically biased. Steele told DOJ official Bruce Orr that he, Steele, was desperate that Trump not get elected president and was passionate. So now we've learned that Steele was actively engaged in stopping the election of Donald Trump. The author of the dossier was not an uninterested, dispassionate, just go where the facts lead, ma'am, individual. He was actively engaged in the defeat of Donald Trump. He was actively engaged in stopping Trump being elected. And and Bruce Orr learned this in the summer of 2016, having met with Steele. And the important part of this is that Bruce Orr knew it at the Department of Justice, and yet everything that happened, happened, even though they knew that this thing was a manufactured political document. But there is more. Fox News says that the memo states the FBI and the Justice Department in their application to the FISA court for the FISA warrant also used media reporting to lend credibility to the dossier that was compiled by Fusion GPS and Michael Steele. In other words, they're preparing the FISA application for the warrant to surveil Trump, the campaign, the transition. Without the dossier, they would not have had nearly enough to seek the warrant. They did not tell the FISA court that the dossier was a political argument. Instead, they included media reporting to lend credibility to the accuracy of the dossier, which means they probably included quotes from the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN. In the application before the FISA court to get the warrant to spy on Trump and related matters. Now, as Fox says, the key here is that Fox previously reported, based on British court records, that Christopher Steele briefed six American media outlets on the dossier and the allegations against Trump. So it appears to be 
circular reporting that was used to lend credibility to the dossier. Steele informs the media of what he wrote, which was made up, none of it yet corroborated. The media then reports it. It gets published and broadcast in the media, and the FBI, the DOJ, include all of that in their FISA application warrant, or warrant application. You want to talk about a conspiracy? It's no wonder the people at the DOJ and the FBI don't want anybody knowing about this. This is the total politicization of the FBI and the DOJ, at least the people involved in both agencies relating to this story. The total politicization and thus the corruption. Media reporting was used to lend credibility where the media didn't know anything other than what Steele told them. So Steele is passing off this fake, phony dossier as fact and real. The media is hearing what they want to hear because everybody involved in this wants to get the hell rid of Donald Trump. Now, eventually, the FBI cut Steele off. After Steele's contact was cut off, Fox News says the memo states that Steele and Fusion GPS continued to pass information to the FBI through Bruce Orr, who was recently demoted over his contacts with Fusion GPS and Steele. Remember, Orr's wife, Nellie, worked for Fusion GPS. She was on the Trump research team, if you will, as early as May of 2016. So even after the FBI decided it was no more useful to them to deal with steel. They cut him loose. The memo says that steel and fusion GPS continued to pass information to the FBI, continued to add to what was in the dossier, just making things up. 